I'm Sarah Gibson and I'm a postpartum doula in the area and I am going to be talking about uh, the fourth trimester and uh, how a postpartum, the, the entire postpartum period and how a postpartum doula is, what they do and, and how they can help. Um, it's so important, uh, postpartum doulas are so important, but they're, they're not very well known about, <laughs> they're not really known about. Um, so I really wanted to highlight the role of postpartum doulas and why uh, they can be so important to the recovery process and the, the postpartum process. Um, starting with just the what the fourth trimester is in general. Uh, so we all know that uh, everyone says three trimesters for, for pregnancy, but it's really pregnancy really is not a three trimester uh, thing. It's that there is something that we call the fourth trimester, uh, which is your, the first three months after you have your baby. And it really is a part of pregnancy. A lot of people think you're done being pregnant after you are after you give birth to your baby and it, it's just not true your body is still pregnant and not only is your body still pregnant but your body also just went through a lot of change very quickly so not only is it part of your pregnancy but it's one of the most important parts of your pregnancy because your body just spent 40 weeks going through very incremental changes and then all of those changes were gone in you know, 24, 48, 72 hours. And so that's, that's everything isn't gonna go back to normal right away. And that recovery period, your home, hormones getting back in balance, your everything kind of resetting to the way it was before it was almost a year ago, it takes time and it takes patience and recovery. And that's what we call the fourth trimester. Um, and I want everybody to know that what your body just did is give birth, not only give birth to a baby, but uh, grow and develop this baby inside you for, for 40 weeks is so amazing and it should be celebrated uh, more than anything else. Um, so what a postpartum doula is and does is, is, very, is specifically for that fourth trimester. It's to be there to support the mother and the family and the baby in any way that they need. And I think um, I think Annette touched on it so well in that that's, it's so important that it's in the way that you need because every mother is different, every postpartum experience is different. And so uh, postpartum doulas are there just to support you in your unique way. Um, whether if you had a completely natural birth where everything went to plan and you're feeling good and confident and happy, that's great. Maybe all you need is somebody to bring you a snack while you're breastfeeding and throw a load of laundry in and that's perfect. But other mothers need more assistance. Maybe you uh, had an unplanned C-section uh, with your first baby and you have no idea how to recover from a C-section. That's something that, and you need more care and a little bit more of a a gentle uh, kind of guidance in what you're doing. If you're a first time mom or even a, a very young first time mom, a teenage mom, and you have a baby and you have no idea what you're doing and you're feeling really uncertain about, babe, about what to do with this new life that you're responsible for, uh, that's where a postpartum doula come in. So it's really a whole myriad of things that really depends on the mother and the family. So just some of the things that postpartum doulas are trained in and specialized in and learn about is infant care, postpartum, vaginal postpartum care, C-section postpartum care, uh, care for siblings, for older siblings while, while you take care of baby, any sort of physical recovery that you, that you need after birth, emotional recovery and emotional support, somebody to be there to talk to, um, I always, one of the biggest things that I do as a postpartum doula is just listen and talk to you. I'm another adult to talk to you besides your partner. I'm some, somebody so you don't feel as isolated and you don't feel like the only thing that's listening to you is this tiny baby that doesn't know what you're saying. Uh, newborn development, specifically knowing what milestones you should, your baby should be reaching and when and how to help them get to that point. Sleep assistance and overnight care. Overnight care is something that, that we do and encourage because as a new mother, sleep is wanting, but it shouldn't be. You should be able to get the sleep that you need because sleep impacts so much of our lives. 
um, meal prep and household household assistance. Your your life doesn't. It, your life should stop when you have a baby, but it doesn't. You still need to have cooking and clean, cooking and cleaning and running the house and keeping everything organized are still all things that are a part of your life and can be very overwhelming when you first bring a baby home and can help with that. And trained in breastfeeding courses and nursing assistants and, and so many more things that really comes down to whatever I can do to support you in that fourth trimester and in that postpartum period and whatever that means to you is so important. Um, and it really is, um, I know a lot of people um, in my experience have said, well, you know, my parents are going to be here for a while or my sister or I have friends who are coming to help or, or whatever it may be, why should I pay for a, for a postpartum doula when I'm going to have this extra help? And that's a really good point. And you should, your, your family should be there. Your family and friends should be there to help you. But why it's so important to, for a postpartum doula specifically, and what I like to, to tell clients and tell people is that sometimes it's good to have not your mother or not your mother-in-law or not your sister or not, not people that know you and know you well, because no matter what, those people are going to come in with their own thoughts and ideas and biases and they know you and they know your baby and and whether they mean to or not it can be very overwhelming to have all of these people talking sometimes it feels like talking at you as a postpartum doula my job is to be a sounding board essentially a completely i am coming in with no biases, no preconceived notions, no, uh, no inclinations as to what all I want to know is how you're doing and what I can do to help. And it's so, it's so refreshing sometimes to have that person who is not, is just there for you in a completely unbiased way. Um, and it's really important to have that. And not only in an unbiased and unbiased and a kind of kind of way, but also in a professional way. While you while you may love and value the input of your mother or in-laws or sister or, or whoever it may be, at the end of the day, well, this isn't necessarily the case for me with my family, but at the end of the day, they haven't been trained. They're not, sometimes you, you want that assurance from somebody who's had the training, who's had the experience, who has had the specific direction to give. Um, and that's so important to be able to feel confident in yourself. One of the biggest things that I like to say to clients is that my job is to talk myself out of the job is, um, and that's actually what something that my postpartum doula trainer said and taught us is it's, it's my role to talk myself out of the job. If I can make my clients feel so confident in their own self and their own motherhood and their own uh, postpartum fourth trimester period, then I've done my job and done it well. And that is that is the goal to make every mother feel as confident as they should be. A lot of people are concerned about, uh, again, why should I pay for, for this person? It's expensive. Why do I need to do uh, what? what would is really the difference in benefit for me and and it's that it's getting gaining that confidence and gaining that ability to see what to see what somebody else can bring to the table and maybe something that you don't know or even if it is something that you know someone you can talk about it with who can understand and approach it in a in a completely different way um, so that is kind of the role of a postpartum doula and why it's so important to, to have and what makes it so different than having a family member or a friend come to help you. As far as um, I wanted to address the, you know, afford the investment of it a little bit. And there are so many things. I know a lot of doulas in the area that we, the passion is just to make sure that the people who need help have the help that they need. And so there are always so many things 
Um, I've been I've been gifted to people before from baby showers, parents, grandparents, and uh, come. To, there are always options, and that's the most important part: is to get the help that you need when you need it. A bit a biggest part is is resources. We as a postpartum doula, I am I am required to have a mine is four page, a four page list of resources from other doulas, lactation consultants, uh, hospitals, pediatricians, dietitians, yoga instructors, fitness, and uh, people who specialize in fitness, just using the resources that I know that you may not be aware of. Um, so that's a little bit about postpartum doulas and what they do and why it's so uh, important and so vital to the fourth trimester in the healing process. Um, it's something that not a lot of people are aware of and I really hope that uh, more people become aware of it, that having that help in, in that period of your life is not only an option, but an attainable option. And that's what we're really striving towards. Um, so we'll, uh, again, I'll be part of the D-Bender list sending out to everybody. Uh, feel free to contact me at any time. I would love to talk with you um, about any about anything, pregnancy or postpartum, and or just about anything. If you just need to talk to somebody outside your household, which we all kind of need in these pandemic times, um, so that is where uh, what we're doing. And I think that, and I'm hoping that we can be able to do it a bit more. I know we're uh, kind of, uh, I'm looking at a kind of uh, faceless um, um, group right here, but can definitely, uh, if anybody has any questions or comments or anything like that, you can feel free to, to say and, and talk about it. We're um, good. If anybody has anything, every I think uh, this is an all doula group here, so we can have a little uh, <laughs> a little doula powwow if we want. <laughs> I have a question. Um, can you tell me what your biggest challenge is being a postpartum doula? Like, what is your biggest challenge when you first walk into there, got the contract signed? What is your first wow? like, you know, or, or that you've dealt with, I guess, with your clients? I think the biggest thing is, so I have two answers. One, the first one is just that I have a baby face and people don't always take me seriously. <laughs> As a postpartum doula. So that's my first answer is being able to- And you can't solve that problem. Yeah, exactly. The masks have weirdly helped. <laughs> we can't see my whole face. Um, that is oddly the same thing. I I have a lot of experience and I know what I'm talking about, but I look very young and I don't know how to how to, to tell people that how to make people have confidence in me that I look. Um, that's the one answer. On a different note, as far as from a more professional standpoint. Um, I think overcoming what the moms are already have in their head is is the biggest thing. Um, so overcoming that I have to breastfeed no matter what, even if I'm you know doing terribly and I'm really emotionally drained and having a hard time, or I you know had you know I heard that if I do this or that or the other, that it's gonna be horrible for my child. Cause new mothers, they just wanna do their best. And any, and sometimes that all of the, the sometimes the internet can be a curse cause it's all of this information 
being thrown at you and they've heard, well, I read this one time and that this is bad. And, and, and then that gets stuck in your head and it's not, and you're not able to overcome it. And, um, I know, I think, I think Sabrina wouldn't mind me mentioning, I, I worked with Sabrina yesterday. I did her first, first visit yesterday for postpartum doula. And a lot of the time I was there was just giving her permission to let things go. And, um, like one of the things in particular was re simply going outside. She was really concerned about the pandemic, about the pollen, about all of these different things. She had a C-section and is in an apartment. So going downstairs and she's like, oh, I shouldn't be moving. I was like, well, have you been outside your, besides going to a doctor's appointment, have you been outside your apartment? No, in two weeks, no, that's, not good um, like you you're allowed to do you are allowed to go for a walk with your with your kids for you know a 10 minute walk is not going to upset your c-section i would recommend being careful but um the pollen is not gonna you know throw a cover over over the stroller if the pollen is gonna bother you like it's okay to just let that go and it's fine so Besides the baby face thing, I would say probably that letting go of your your pre the preconceived notions that mothers have, and that has become such a big thing, especially in these days with vaccination questions and and breastfeeding issues and, and everything like that. So I would say that would probably be the biggest thing. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, well, we, um, the 